can't wait to see you in Ottawa as our next MP for Mississauga Streetsville. And speaking of leaders, uh, it's great to be here with Mayor Bonnie Crombie, uh, who I actually got elected with in my very first election. Uh, you were MP for Mississauga Streetsville as I was the uh, new rookie, rookie MP for Papineau. And uh, we sat together, learned a lot, and really developed uh, a deep commitment for service to the people of Canada that uh, we've both continued in, in, in different ways. But it is so good to have you here with me uh, today, old friend. Just this week, you made, Bonnie, the decision that all Mississauga City employees will have to be vaccinated. That's the kind of local leadership that will see us through this crisis. So thank you again and again for stepping up, Bonnie. And that's the kind of leadership that people like Omar and Adnan, who've welcomed us here today, deserve. They're the owners of this restaurant. They were telling me, well, things are getting better. We're not out of the woods yet. They struggled like so many small businesses did through this pandemic, um, but we've made it through because Canadians were there for each other because the government was there for them. And of course, Omar and Adnan aren't the only ones to know that uh, we still have to work hard to get through this. In a few days, school will be back here in Ontario. And I'm a dad. My youngest, Hadrian, is heading into grade two in an Ottawa public school. He can't get his shots yet. And like millions of parents, I'm worried. But there's a lot we can do to protect kids, just like our workers. And the single most powerful way to keep each other safe? Getting vaccinated. Dès le début de cette crise, on savait que les vaccins allaient être notre the meilleur The vaccines were going to be our best weapon against COVID-19, which is why we ensured to have enough doses for all Canadians who wanted them. We put forth mandatory vaccination for all federal employees. We're going to make sure that all people who use a train or plane are going to get vaccinated. And we're going to continue working. Today, I want to introduce our plan to finish with COVID-19 once and for all. Quebec and BC have already announced their vaccine certificate, which will enable those who are adequately protected to go to certain public places. We know that these measures are going to make a real difference to stop the propagation of the virus and protect us, and they're going to encourage those who hesitate to finally do the right thing. These certifications will also be good for the economy because they mean that businesses can stay open and people can continue working. We're there to support those provincial efforts. We will create a $1 billion COVID-19 proof of vaccination fund. So if your premier, wherever you are across the country, if your premier mandates that everyone in your local restaurant or gym or other non-essential locations must be fully vaccinated and show proof, we'll pay for the development and rollout of that program. A vaccine mandate for non-essential businesses is a good idea. It keeps people safe. It encourages everyone to do the right thing. It keeps our businesses open and it keeps our economy rebuilding. In fact, a top bank ex economist has warned that provinces that don't bring in these vaccine mandates will have slower job creation and a weaker recovery than those that do. And that's not good news for jobs, for businesses, or for anyone. This is about doing the right thing and the smart thing. Already, Premier Horgan and Premier Legault have stepped up. And I certainly hope that here in Ontario, Premier Ford steps up as well. It's time for him to listen to public health officials and leaders like Bonnie Crombie. And we'll be ready when he does. Because keeping you safe, that's my top priority. And not just through this fall, but over the long term too. Chaque Canadien va pouvoir avoir Every un Canadian 
will be able to get a booster shot once experts recommend it. And just like the vaccine you received this year, the booster shot will be paid for by the federal government. We're also going to invest to do even more research on COVID-19 to better understand the effects of the virus long term, specifically on children, to make sure that we do everything we can for their health. We've come so far in this fight against COVID-19. Together, we have to keep going. So get your vaccine if you haven't already. If you're a student over 12 or a parent getting ready for September, put it on your back to school list. If you're a young adult or senior, put those two shots on your to-do list. We can't afford to stop now. And we certainly can't afford a party that would roll back our progress. And that's why this election matters so much. Because from vaccines to $10 a day childcare, none of this happens if Aaron O'Toole is sitting across the table from Doug Ford or any other premier. Leadership is about choices. And our choices? We chose to raise taxes on the wealthiest 1% so we could lower them for the middle class. We chose to fight for $10 a day childcare right across the country. Nous, on a fait le choix de travailler ensemble. We made the choice to work together because we believe that building a better future for a mother working for her children means a better future for all of us. And that's exactly what we're going to continue doing for the environment and green jobs, for affordable housing and quality health care vaccination, and to finish with COVID-19. These are our choices. They're not everyone's. Aaron O'Toole would rip up our $10 a day child care agreements. He would slow down climate action for the economy because he doesn't understand that they go hand in hand. He would choose landlords over renters. He'd choose more options in health care for the wealthy and fewer for everyone else. The one thing he won't choose? Vaccines. He can't even tell his own candidates to get their shots. He can't tell Canadians why he doesn't think everyone boarding a plane or a train should be vaccinated. Those are his choices. And they're the wrong choices at exactly the wrong time. That's what's at stake in this election. And the path Canada takes? Well, that's up to you. That's your choice. I want to take a moment right now to talk about those folks outside, as there have been at a number of stops along this campaign, um, who are protesting masks, who are protesting vaccines, who are angry about public health measures like lockdowns. That's their choice. That's a choice that they are uh, expressing loudly and clearly. But it's not just a choice that they're making for themselves. It's a choice they're imposing on others. Because we only get through this pandemic, we only finish with this pandemic, if everyone steps up, not just for themselves, but for each other. My son's seven years old. He can't get vaccinated. Thousands upon thousands of kids across the country depend on adults doing their part and getting vaccinated, on making the smart choices to keep each other safe. So it's not just about you. It's about everyone you love. It's about our doctors and emergency workers who are getting more and more overwhelmed with people who haven't gotten their vaccines. It's about being there for each other. And it's about finishing the incredibly hard work that we've done as Canadians over the past year and a half. People stepped up. Omar and Adnan were telling me how difficult it was over the past 17 months, how much they relied on government supports to get through this, but also how much they relied on their neighbours, their customers to keep doing the right things so we could get to this point. And things are starting to pick up again. Things are getting back to normal. Well, those folks outside and the politicians who agree with them are endangering that. 
And that's the choice people here in the GTA and right across the country get to make about how we finish this fight against the pandemic, how we continue to be there for each other. The conservative leader won't even tell his candidates to get vaccinated. How does he think we're going to actually get through this pandemic under his leadership? We wouldn't. For the past year and a half, we've been through a lot, but we went through it together. Every day, I'd come out of my house, stand in front of my door, and talk to you about PPE, or the wage subsidy, or the borders, or kids, or how we needed to keep safe. And every day, I'd think about the healthcare workers using this PPE. I think about the small businesses keeping people on the job. I think about the truckers and grocery workers keeping our plates full. I think about the kids worried about their parents, worried about their grandparents, and missing their friends, but hanging in there. We knew we had to have their backs. So that's what we did. And that's what you did, too. Canada has weathered this crisis better than almost anywhere else in the world. We did that together. You did that. And just think about what we can do next together. We can move faster and go further than we could ever have imagined before. Those are the decisions we're going to be making right now, not a year from now, not two years from now, but right now. And that's why I need your support. So we can do more, much more for everyone. My friends, I'm asking you to step up once again for good jobs now and in the years to come, for affordable homes for your future and childcare for your daughters, for the air you breathe today and the planet your grandchildren will inherit tomorrow, for the Canada we want to build together. This is our moment. This is our choice. And if you're with me, I'm ready for more hard work. I'm ready for hope. I'm ready for everything we can achieve with faith in each other, with a belief in what this country can be. Let's choose forward for everyone. Merci.